Oh, fire. Fire good. Yes, yes, fire good. <sighs> Guys, you may not know this, but on top of being a knife master, I am in fact also a wizard pyromancer. That's right. Don't believe me? Watch this. Just charging up the fireball here. Huh? I have no idea if you can see that. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Watch, watch this. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Huh? 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 Fireball! <laughs> yeah. Sienna's pyromancer ain't got shit on me. What is up guys, PK here. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Pyromancer, sort of like a quick build guide, but specifically for the Chaos Waste. So we're gonna start it out with a little introduction, where I'm gonna be talking about a couple of the boons you're looking for on a Pyromancer. Now the part two of the Chaos Waste guide is gonna be coming this weekend, I think Saturday, because I don't think I can finish it for tomorrow. Also, after I finish making this video today, I had an even better game to illustrate some of the, the concepts, uh, which was actually successful, because in today's video we're actually going to lose at one point. But nonetheless, it was a really interesting game, and I think it perfectly illustrates a couple of the points that I talked about in the initial definitive guide to the Chaos Wastes. And what I mean by that is I had a team that not only had great control when it came to bosses, and we fought a lot of bosses, okay? like we. The whole first game was just walking on a knife set, right? Like, like we only made it by a whim. Uh, even when it looked like we were in control, we were always, you know, this this close to just dropping the whole game, and that's quite often going to be the case. And again, that's what I sort of was trying to advocate for. If you want to beat it on Cataclysm difficulty, it's better to lose early on. And those games, despite the fact that... Horrible example, right? Because this would then be that maybe one in five example where we should have really gotten all the way to the end. Like, the fact that we lost was... It was kind of dumb. Like, we should not have lost at the point where we lost. It wasn't... I mean, you always lose to some extent due to mistakes, right? But it wasn't a case of we just got overwhelmed. It was, uh, was a bit of stupidity involved. Let, uh, let me put it that way. We'll get to that when, when we get there. We're going to have the other gameplay video uh, commentary, which uh, I spent like 10 hours editing. We're going to have that tomorrow. Like, uh, I'm trying the best I can to sort of elevate my gameplay videos on top of just, you know, the gameplay itself. Now, the reason that I can't finish the Chaos Waste Guide until Saturday is because I had to spend something like 15 hours cutting out every individual icon for every boon in the Chaos Waste, put it into a pre-made neat little uh, rectangle that are all the same size, put in the text manually so that I sort of, I'm laying the groundwork for what a what I'm going to use in a lot of different videos, right? So, and in an, in an attempt to elevate these gameplay videos as well, uh, I've tried to have sort of the boons visible so you can see my build as we go, you know, through the video so that it's visible at all times. Um, and really all of these boons, I, I've, I've like, I have a, just a list now, like a whole, a whole folder, sorry, filled up just with pictures and images of all of the boons categorized by different, you know, Everything related to career abilities, everything related to melee power, everything related to ranged power, every rare, every exotic, every uh, unique, every, you know, so on and so forth, every defensive, every, you know, you get the point, right? Um, so that's been a lot of groundwork, but I think that's going to pay off because now I have sort of the pre-made templates that I can use for a bunch of other videos. But that's essentially why the, the, the Chaos Wastes Part 2 guide is going to be coming Saturday. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let's get to it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Pablo Escobar of Arson, the pyromaniacal pyromadlat pyromancer, specifically in the context of the Chaos Wastes. You see, she has a homing flaming flaming homing missile for an ultimate, which, when combined with her talent, Blazing Echo, allow us to refund 100% of our career ability cooldown whenever our ultimate ability performs a successful critical hit. And whilst this has never been the go-to meta for Pyromancer, we can now in the Chaos Wastes exploit the fact that we have a boon known as the uh, somethings Frenzy. The name is not important, okay? The important thing is that every time you take damage, you gain guaranteed critical hits for 3 seconds. And no body mains, this does not mean you're supposed to shoot every Sienna on your team with your troll hammer torpedo. 
That's not how it works. It cannot be activated by friendly fire. It can, however, be activated by self-inflicted damage. And whilst I know you're already wondering how drinking an infinite bomb potion and throwing them into the ground could possibly be a viable strategy, it thankfully works with a much simpler and much easier trigger, and that's vending. Yes, you heard me right. All you need to fulfill your dream of infinite flaming homing missiles is a single exotic trick and extremely suicidal tendencies. The latter of which, unfortunately, made it extremely hard to get the Boon FDA approval. You know, the Fat Shark Dank administration. But anyways, we thankfully found the solution in a secondary boon. That's right, there's more. Garden of more. Okay, enough screwing around, let's get serious. Next up, we got Athorsis Malice, which is just an amazing boon for Sienna in general, especially with the Flaming Sword. Trust me when I say in this case, it's a prescription and not a suggestion, because you need a way to generate temporary HP because you're gonna be vending all the freaking time. Trust me, once you've had a taste of infinite ulcies, you're not gonna stop vending just because you're nearly dead and entirely out of healing. No, no, you have infinite ulties to cast and they're not gonna cast themselves. I mean, unless you have more Grimm's resourcefulness, in which case I do guess some of them are gonna cast themselves, since the extra projectile does function with your ultimate ability, but definitely not most of them. But regardless, these are three exotic boons that you're pretty much always gonna be looking for, and because they're only exotic and thus show up fairly frequently, they're often gonna form the backbone of your build, and hopefully keep you alive for long enough to obtain one of the real heavy hitters, each of which on their own can truly take pretty much any variation of this build to a whole nother level. And should you ever find yourself fortunate enough to ever get the chance to combine them, you can just straight up annihilate everything in line of sight. Oh wait, you got homing missile. You can just straight up annihilate things even without line of sight. Like we're talking an extermination event of such proportions that Sigmar himself would have to implement an endangered species act just to keep rats off the endangered species list. And that's before we even factor in the fact that with infinite ulties you can also have infinite power and or vampire potion activations. And that is on top of the fact that you can also reduce your entire team's career ability cooldowns by 10% for each of your casts. Which means at this point, not only do you potentially have a double infinity of lightning inducing and or exploding flaming critical hit missiles with lifesteal capabilities, but now pretty much your entire goddamn team also has free career abilities. Like, I don't even know where we go at this point, guys. As for level properties, you're really looking for health, stamina recovery, block cost reduction, and if you don't have the top left property that gives you guaranteed critical hits, then you're definitely also looking for a crit chance and possibly, possibly, maybe even in some rare cases, crit power. So just showcasing my initial build here. Now, the only thing you really need to notice there is that I'm using Blazing Echo. Blazing Echo being the one where you get 100% of your cooldown back if you uh, perform a critical hit with your ulti, and we'll get to why later. Here, I was actually selecting for the top one because I wanted stamina recovery, and three of us actually selected the top one. But because Chaos Waste is so great, it's a 50-50 unless everyone agrees. This is really a masterclass in how you want your team to operate, despite the fact that I I spoke very little in VC throughout the whole one, like very little. Um, see, already here. Just look at that beautiful control from the foot knife. Like, not gonna lie, that is that 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 is beautiful. That is exactly how you want to do it. Like the amount of times that I fight a rat ogre with a team, and it's like it, it's just so uncoordinated. It's so unstructured. This was absolutely. This just told me, wow, this might actually be an amazing game. Like I even told them, I cut that part out because that was the in between, the boring part. But I actually said, wow, I have a feeling this is gonna be a great game, uh, a great run, just nice because. Control. Like, that was flawless. That's a good sign. Watch out, plague vermin. So that's exactly how you want to do it. Especially, like, it's not just when you're under pressure you want to, you want to do it when you're not under pressure, because when you do it, you kill the rat ogre in no time, preventing that, like, eventual special spawn and, and horde spawn during uh, the boss. Now, I believe I'm about to get fucked. Yeah. Oh, shit. Had to include it just for honesty. <laughs> Let's be real, I got wrecked there. But it also leads in to some very conservative play 
which it's a good thing to showcase, right? Because you, it's very important to know also when you just need to play very conservative. Because this is not optimal, an optimal situation, right? This is, this is not looking great. And momentarily we're about to get, you can't see that, because my UI fucks up the timer of, um, of x -bonds. But we're about to get a rattle as well on top. I think quite often what happens is, you know, <laughs> you get complacent until the moment you realize, oh shit, I might actually die. And then then that's when you, you really want to show your, your true character, right? I think everyone can get complacent, but it's when you're a... It's when you're gray <laughs> with no temp HP, that's when your true, true player shows. <laughs> oh, see, this is not great, right? Not gonna lie, that, that's not optimal conditions here. So what do you do here? Well, well, it's quite simple. If I move forward, there's a drop down, right? Which means I'll get completely separated from my whole team. So that's that's not optimal. Like here, I really wanted to get my, my staff out to deal more rat ogre DPS, but that would have been greedy. There was really no need to, right? Because really all I had to do was not fuck up. Control the rat ogre and not fuck up. And you see, I got the health pot, and now we're all good. Wait, what killed the foot knight there? Oh, it was the rat over. God damn, that must have been a big area attack. And back into the dot. Beautiful. You know, it's been a little wonky, but so far, fairly, you know, manageable, under control, I would say, all things considered. If we can find some healing for the dwarf. A lot of people like to stay with the egg before they are waiting to fight it, but you actually don't have to. The boss is going to spawn and come to you regardless, so there's actually no need to stay with the egg. So, in case anyone was wondering. But if you can see everyone's health, you know, we're not exactly, yeah, you see, there goes one. Um, we're not exactly in optimal conditions, right? Like, fighting that boss, choosing to fight it is very risky. And again, possibly going to cost us the game at this early point, right? And you might go, well, well that's stupid, that's crazy risk, but it's the first game. It's the first one, we're still very early on, and this is really where you want to maximize your uh, your potential gains, right? If you're gonna lose, this is where you want to lose. That makes sense, because that's how you waste the least time possible, and then every most runs that you then actually get past the first one are gonna be successful runs, despite the fact that this one wasn't. <laughs> Gotta trust me on that one. Uh, you can see Grip, our uh, fantastic footnote here, is very low. Now, I'm also very low. I'm max overcharge. Just had room to drink my health pot here, but oof, this could have very easily gone south. Like, very easily. Thankfully. I managed to get the kills there. And since, uh... The Vampire Potion is based off number of kills, and not health or anything else. It's very effective when you clear hordes. Get back up the max, XP, max, max HP. Really no one taught the Storm Feed how to aim downwards. Until then. I think the biggest problem with the Corusation staff in particular, especially in the Chaos Waste, is the fact that you don't have the 20% reduction on the staff, or unless you're playing the, the Unchained, then you can have 10%. But 
Like, the overcharge usage of this staff is absolutely insane, right? And at least on the Unchained, you have, like, you have means to deal with it. And you could have with the Pyromancer as well, if you took that ulti talent, right? But the thing about the ulti talent I selected, the critical hit overcharge one, is there's one particular boon that really, really makes it amazing. Now here, I was sort of split between... Uh, the Arthas Malice, Authority, Authority's Malice, and Exhaust, but I did go for Exhaust. I think, actually, in the moment, I, like, we had to move fast, right? I think if I thought more about it, I might have selected the other, but I think just off the basis that it was unique, and the other was an exotic, I, I just made a choice and moved on, right? You don't always have the luxury of waiting forever to pick the right one, and I think you could make a case for both in this uh, particular instance. Of course, the thing about the one I did select, the ulti talent is, like, the downside is that when you use your first ulti, let's say you yeah, ulti, you sure, get... But I feel like it's better to take risks early. What he said. Now, uh, using your uh, ultimate ability, having a high critical hit chance, if you get the critical hit, that resets your ulti. But it also then removes all your overcharge, which makes it... which makes a double ulti uh, less likely, right? So just, you know, using that chain ulti is less likely, but I actually still, I, I would still argue that it's better for two reasons. First of all, using your ulti, even if you, then you have a free critical hit, and you can then spam your ability again, which with this staff, really, you get max overcharge in no time, right? Like four, four to five, I think, I think it's like five uh, left clicks, or at most six right click charge ups which take no time, right? So, like, getting max overcharge for the staff, not a problem. Um, and so I actually don't think it was it was a bad choice, uh, and still, I think it was the right choice. Um, and the second reason is that once you combo it with property that I'm gonna get later in the game, then it doesn't really matter. And that's, that's the one property I may have already mentioned. So I'm recording this before doing... Yeah, yeah, so... Maybe I've already mentioned it, maybe you already know what I'm talking about, but otherwise I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, I have already told you. <laughs> thinking, thinking about it more, I'm definitely going to tell it first. So essentially, we're talking about the guaranteed crit when you uh, when you vent, right? When you take damage. But the thing about that property, as I've probably already told you, is that it gives you guaranteed critical hits and it works on vending. Which means, at that point, it doesn't matter that you remove all your critical hit chains. And in that case, it only becomes a good thing, so you can keep spamming your staff more. Now, as you can see, I'm very used to playing the version of the Pyromancer where you get temporary. I'm very used to that. I might even go as far as to say, if all you want is winning, <laughs> you might actually be better off with that one. Uh, in every scenario, except the one where you get the exotic trait. But it's only an exotic, not a unique, right? So, I, the thing about this build, again, that I may have already mentioned, is that it's one of the few really OP builds. Like, like where I would go as far as to say, broken builds, right? And it's okay that there are broken builds in the Chaos Waste, because again, getting a broken build is very largely dependent on probability, on luck. But this is one of the only things, I would say, a broken build that is only dependent on a single exotic trait. Like, almost every other insane build I can think of needs more than that. Like, at the very least, it's depending on a unique, which we'll also get in this particular run. So, uh, we're hitting one of those as well. One HP, like a boss, calculated. And you see, this might be the situation where you would not really feel comfortable fighting a boss. And I totally agree with that. I wasn't comfortable with us fighting a boss, but I still think it was the right call. Again, because this was early on. And, and that's really what, uh, yeah, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about playing conservatively, right? 
about not spending all your uh, your coins early on on random boons because that's generally speaking not worth it. I'm not saying you could can't buy uh, any boons. It's very much dependent on how many coins you're likely to obtain throughout the first two maps before you get to the first. Uh, preferably, you want to have 600 coins on your first shrine. Um, that might sound like a lot, but you wanna you wanna prepare for the possibility of something like getting two uniques that you want, or or potentially two rares. And uh, I have a good feeling about this team. And a miracle. Famous last words. <laughs> I actually think I'm about to drop momentarily, if I recall. Not completely, but uh... I have a good feeling about this too. Kadoosh! I'm pretty sure I'm about to drop here. That's what I meant. I, like this whole first game really felt like we were playing like on a knife set, right? Watch out for Sound a little bit off or is it just me? Just a quick your timber upgrade. Yeah, 4% crit chance, that's alright. I was hoping for coins, but uh, you know. Oh, I remember that archer. It took like three. Yeah. Fuck it. This staff at range, though. Oh. Up close. It's insane. See that? Mmm. That beautiful control. You see that? Everyone could really learn a lot from that. Boom! Like, ch check that out. Like, that was amazing. Grip, you are an amazing Kruber. You are an amazing foot knight. Like that, that was beautiful. That, that, mwah, mwah. Like I have no other, I have no other description. Sure, you did drop after, but no, like, that happens, okay? Doesn't matter. Full redemption, okay? <laughs> the move you made there, beautiful, beautiful. It was just nice to see how a whole team and everyone seemed to understand that you don't need to take aggro on the boss at totally random arbitrary times, which happens all the freaking time. It's the worst when you're like, everything is neat and under control and someone just ulties because they can and you're like, bruh, 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 you do know, you don't have to ulti just because you can't, right? Like, everything was perfectly under control over here save your ulti or if it grabs someone if there's a boss or uh, no not a boss a special or you know there's a hundred things when everything is under control right then you do not need to use your ulti on a boss like, I please just tell it if everything is perfectly under control then don't use your ulti okay just don't it's not necessary right now <laughs> you're just gonna steal the aggro and it's gonna confuse everyone because the boss is gonna switch around and do weird you know yeah Sorry, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, you may notice, the uh, observant viewer might notice that this is, uh, the exact clip that I use in the intro for, uh, just because it's the one I had available with the Minotaur that was, like, near me, was, or that I had, you know, it was recent. Uh, I recalled that uh, there was a Minotaur here, which is why I used it. In the intro of the uh, definitive guide. Yeah, Minotaurs are uh, among the harder bosses to control, no doubt about that. They're at least hard to keep in place, let me put it that way. <laughs> so the, the Corusation staff is slightly less effective.
Again, with a Minotaur, it's okay to take the aggro, right? Because you can't keep it in place anyways. There's no inherent sort of... I mean, you can. It is possible. But but more likely than not, you're not you're not going to keep him locked in one position. At least it's very difficult to do so, let's put it that way. <laughs> and it's about reading the room. If 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 you can clearly tell that it's a boss is under control, then there's just no need to, right? In a lot of cases. That was pretty much the the first map. A lot of close calls, like uh, despite the fact that we never had more than I think two people down at any one time. There were there were a lot of thin margins. Let me put it that way. There were a lot of thin margins. Considering he was using spear and shield first time, I'd say that's a pretty uh, pretty acceptable uh, result. the sky. Zinch sends bolts of change to slay you. Oh god. I recall this next bit. <laughs> I'm about to make a little bit of a little bit of a embarrassing mistake. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Tiny, you know. I'm not sure how I didn't notice the bolts. Got a few things up. You, you, you'll see momentarily. <laughs> Generally, when you're in this part of the map, you don't know yet which part is forward. I could, I, I know now because I just spotted it. Um, but essentially, you want to. I can see that. Sorry, that's not the opening. Um, there's only one of those locations that are open, right? So you want to usually want to split up two and two, two to each side, and whichever side uh, has the opening. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, technically, whichever side doesn't have the opening, you clear that area for loot and you go over to the two people that are at the opening, right? That makes sense. And again, in this case, I believe the opening was in the middle here. We didn't do that, but that's fine. Again, we weren't communicating. But, but if in a perfect world, right? That's that's how you want to be effective uh, when it comes to grabbing coins. Whenever the match splits into two parts with drop downs, right? Where you have to split up if you want to cover all spots. Then again, you, you split up two and two, and this is... Okay, this is the spot where I'm like, Look how invisible the, the things are that I for some reason didn't hear. I mean, I probably did. I don't know what happened, okay? Get off my back. I just... <laughs> just, I, I don't know why I didn't move. <laughs> that really hurt. But but for real though, unlike the, the lightning in... Uh, in, uh, in Weaves... And as a modifier, you know, from uh, from uh, playing Twitch mode, these once they're active are freaking invisible on the ground, and I'm about to die to one. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, uh, when the map splits up and there's a drop down, you want to split up two and two, and then you want to rush as much as possible to clear all the loot and as quickly as possible get back to the spot where you uh, gather. Yeah, look here, look here, okay? Did you see that? I don't know if you saw that. Anyone see that? See, there's a dwarf there? No, there's not. I think oh, my sure. brain. I, 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 did you see that? <laughs> look, just look. It's I, I, I'm not blaming the dwarf here. That was my fault. But look, I, like it, it's like the, the dwarf pulled the fast on me. There's a dwarf there. There's not. Where the hell did the dwarf go in there? <laughs> but legitimately, what? How did the dwarf disappear so fast? Like, like I, I'm, I'm actually baffled. How did? The... Where did the dwarf go? Oh shit! I, could... I, I think my brain just did not register that there was a, <laughs> because the dwarf there, dwarf gone. <laughs> not excusing it, just saying. <laughs> How did she disappear so fast? Yeah, yada yada yada, this bit was kind of boring. Nothing really happened, then we get to this part. I'm about to pull a baller move, not gonna lie. Jesus. 
see that? On the ground. Oh, I was in the air. Hold it. I did that. I did that. Kidding. I'm about to get hit like a moron. Get really little health. And yeah, that's what I mean again. Like, everyone gets complacent. Myself included. All the time, right? But it's what happens after you realize. You know, those moments of like, God damn it, why did, why did I just get hit like that like an absolute moron when I didn't have to get hit? Like, I absolutely did not have to get hit right there, right? It was just pure, poor, bad, sort of lazy gameplay, right? That's why I got hit. But it's what you do after that, which truly, uh, I think, truly matters in a lot of cases, right? It's your ability to turn on that sort of... How, how do you put it? It's like... There's a good saying, and like... Which is a good sort of generalization for gaming. That, that you need to know how to play. I'm gonna use CS as an example, because I believe I've heard it said about But you need to know how to play perfect CS, in order... Which is kind of strike in order to know how to deviate from it, right? Right, if that makes sense. I don't know, I guess, but that really, it applies to a lot of gaming. You need to know how to play absolutely perfectly boring strategies in order to know when it makes sense to deviate from playing perfectly boring strat strategies, right? That's not what happened here. I'm not trying to say that that's, <laughs> that's what happened here. I just thought of it and I thought it would make sense to, to share that knowledge, right? That, that you. It makes sense to know how to play perfectly conservatively in every situation possible. Ouch. Because uh, if you know how to do that, that's really what you need to know in order to know when it makes sense to not do it. Big brain stuff here. I'm trying to trying to relate. <laughs> this is like the philosophy of gaming. We're like going really broad here. Big brain stuff. <laughs> Just joking. I'm not serious about that. <laughs> the big brain stuff at least. But it but it's an actual thing. It, it makes sense if you think about it. Only only by knowing how to play the perfect sort of calculated game, right? And never taking any risks. That's what you need to know in order to know when to take a calculated risk. And have you know at the right time, that is. <laughs> because anyone could be like this is calculated risk. Just believe it or not, there are times when it makes sense to go to absolute mad lab. A little bit of interesting positioning here. Now this is one of those times where I really wish I had the complex staff because if I had the complex staff, I had the control to get him up here. And there's a really, really subtle thing here. If you notice, there's an assassin on my right, and this is like one of those small twerks of positioning that you might not think about, but really, for the duration I was on the left side of that panel, like that tiny panel there, I might only be covered on a 90 degree right angle. Oh fuck me! Right? Hold what? on a sec. What the fuck is that? That's what happened, but I forgot about that in the moment. But I, it might only be a tiny coverage on a 90 degree right angle on my right side, right? But as long as I have that 90 degree angle and I know the assassin is on the right side of it, then I don't have to worry about the assassin in my mind at all. I can completely 100% forget about the assassin. Because for the duration, it's on the right side. Like, until it despawns, right? And I hear that. Until I get that sound cue. Any pathing between me and the assassin is within my melee range. So, when you have an assassin like that, even just having that tiny little barrier between you and it, and that small opening, that means you don't have to worry about the assassin at all, because it has to go to your melee range in order to reach you. And thus, you don't have to worry about it until it despawns. So despite the fact that that's not safe on all angles, and and then I don't I don't have to think about it. I don't need it in my visual field because even if it walks to me, then it's gonna be my visual field before it can jump me and actually target me, right? That makes sense. So when it's on the right side of the screen right here. Oops, where's my mouse? There it is. So when it was over there, right? <laughs> I think you get what I'm saying. 
I hope so at least. And it was on the right side of this. Then again, then I just I can just zone out. I don't have to worry about it. Which means you can stay focused on other things. Because don't that's not something you should undervalue, right? Because a lot of dying in this game comes down to the amount of of things. Oh, sorry about that Discord notification. I forgot to turn. The amount of things you can juggle in your head at any given time. And obviously, a lot of that comes uh, down to experience. Oh, that was in that was actually in the recording. A lot of that comes down to experience, right? The more experience you have, the easier it is to, to sort of uh, to sort of pick out individual threats and, and sort of select which ones are are relevant, which ones you can you can ignore. And sort of which ones you can kind of keep in the back you of your mind coins, and ignore until they become prevalent, right? So it's boom. a huge thing to notice, just that little barrier Perhaps means, okay, I can just completely forget about it and focus on time. what's in front of me. You each have your now, own as you can see, I've been very conservative with my money, and so has the elf. Like, n having 900 at this point is pretty good, right? I've only bought, I believe, uh, two weapon upgrades, 180 and one, uh, 120. Is it 160? I forgot. One, but yeah, one green, one blue, um, and that's it. And no, and one. Did I buy a boom? I bought one boom. Yeah, one boom. Now this is where I should get interesting. I don't know if you saw it earlier, but we did. We got the critical hit in the in the chest, right? This is. This is when start things start to get spicy, right? And they're about to get even spicier after we defeat this chest right here. This is when the build has come together. I really, it's all dependent on the one trade we got at the end of the previous run. And again, that's one exotic trade. The chances of getting it are not bad, and we have that. And this is my first time actually having it in a game. I started playing, uh, queuing the Pyromancer because. I found out that this actually worked, right? I, I'm not claiming to be the one who found out, but but I found out that, oh shit, this actually works with vending, which surprised me. And that's why I started queuing up. And funny enough, I actually got it. This was the first game after I figured it out, figured out that this worked um, and managed to get it right after. So that was a bit lucky, but nonetheless. <laughs> I did fuck it up there. I don't know if you saw. Okay, because you can see. Okay, check this out. It's, uh, every time that you can see the red trait I have on the center of my screen, I've made it as a priority buff. That is the guaranteed critical hits for three seconds, right? And that activates every time I vent to the extent that I take damage when venting, right? So it has to be enough that I t actually lose health. So you can see that it's enough. If you spam it, it's enough for three uh, ultis, right? But you, it's better to be too careful than not careful enough. Oh, no, ah, it wasn't actually active. Damn it. The critical hit has to connect in order to uh, to get the ulti back, which is also why that it's not always going to work with three ultis. Sometimes it only works with two. It's because there's a travel time of the projectile, and even though it's a guaranteed crit, it's all it only counts as a crit if it actually encounters a living enemy. Which means sometimes you can get in three. I, it might even be possible to get in four if you're close enough. I haven't tried that out, I tested that, but it might be. But I would say. You're safe with two, and if you do it properly, you can fairly consistently get three, right? Um, but it's, again, it's better, it's better if you're unsure if you can get in the third, then don't, right? Then it's better to not cast the third, because you can just vent and get another shot. Uh, I fucked it up a couple of times, but again, the, it's way more consistent to do like that. My primary issue uh, in throughout this run now is actually my HP. As you can see, we haven't had a single HP boosting modifier yet, which was a huge problem. Because vending costs a lot of HP. <laughs> Especially when you have a staff that just spends overcharge <laughs> um, in such a manner. See? Just... Two... Just getting in some overcharge in between as well, just because I could. Oh, 
But essentially you have infinite ulties, right? <laughs> Until you fuck it up. As long as you make sure that you do it within three seconds of taking damage, and as long as the projectile encounters something, then you have unlimited ulties. And Chain Lightning also procs. It also works, as I said earlier, if you have double projectiles of any kind. Like any of the traits that give you double projectiles, that's gonna cast double ulties on every one of those ulties, right? I mean, which is just insane. And it also works with the guaranteed crit explode. Um, yeah, there's just there's so many things you can build with this. And, and I think the great thing about the build is that, sure, in its sort of purest form, it is dependent on this one exotic trait, right? But it's not, it's not like do or die. If you don't get the guaranteed critical hit, these properties still all work together. There, there, there are many things that are, that you can put on top of this critical hit thing. And you're, quite often you'll get critical hit chains as one of the properties in your, in, uh, from your, uh, your, your level, uh, level buffs, right? Level properties, whatever you want to call them. Um, which means that even if you don't get it, it, that doesn't mean that your your build is bad. Which is why I really like. Which is what I think you should go for with these. Right? You want uh, when you're selecting a character and trying to make a build. Of course, there are no guarantees with any given individual property. So, generally speaking, to the extent that it's possible, you want to find a focus group on a class where you find a couple of different things that synergize well and some of them might have this one trait like chain lightning like how many of them are gonna have chain lightning right? let's be real but it can't all uh, be do or die on chain lightning because if it is then again then your odds aren't great then you have to be like my mod gutsy who literally just rolls two uniques on every freaking shrine right um, and we can't all be like gutsy and just have the luck of the irish um, so preferably you want to have several different things playing into your build. And then in this case there's just the fact that whenever you get that sweet 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 guaranteed critical hit, which again is only an exotic and thus I'd say if you go for it you, you can get it. I'd say, I want to say once every two runs if you do a full run, a full run of five maps, uh, five chests, something like that, but maybe it's one in three. I'd say one in three is probably more. Uh, like this. That's not bad if you think about it. One in three. Like, and that's just for the guaranteed crits, right? Then you have the double projectiles, which again works for your ulti, which there's more than one of. There's both the pick up and uh, no, use a consumable plus one. And then there's the, 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 uh, the unique, which is just a passive double. Then you have the chain lightning, which plays on top, which is great. You have the uh, every time you use your uh, ultimate ability, you get movement speed. That's also great. You have uh, things like the um, using ulti, you get uh, like you you can duplicate items. That's always good. That's one of those general ones, like that just work in general. You have things like every time you use ulti, there's a 50% chance that you get the effect of your potion. That's absolutely insane. Especially because, just think about it. Just think about how many times you're going to cast your ulti when you have this build, right? You can spam it so much. But really, the only reason we failed here, in my opinion, which we're about to, sorry for the spoiler, is because we weren't communicating. That's it. Right? We, we, were, we, were, we weren't playing as a team at this moment, or I'm 100% certain we would not have lost here. We separated into two and two, which is more risky, but I don't think that's what cost us the game. And I'm really, I'm really sorry, Elf, for what I'm. I have absolutely no hate. Like if this comes down to a case of two people having two different, but like, it's easy to say that one is right and the other is wrong, and I don't think. I think I was right here, but at the same time, I can totally, I totally understand what the elf was saying. Sometimes, from a different person's perspective, things are going to look different, and and different solutions are going to make sense, right? So it's not all. So I totally understand, and there's no hard feelings, here, no hard feelings whatsoever. Um, again, it's a subjective in the moment. It's so easy in hindsight to say that either was better, right? But as you can see, everyone died here, which is unlucky, and again. 
at the end of the day, it's as much their fault for dying as it's it's either mine or the else, right? So again, there's no blame here. But what I do think it came down to, at least after the other two people died, as you can see here, with the infinite ulties here, I did cast the third one too late, but that didn't matter much. You can see the elf had a heal and a vampire potion. And I think all things considered, this was a totally winnable situation. Okay, so take note of me and the elf's positioning here, okay? And again, no hate, because I think I think everyone on the team played really, really well. They got overwhelmed and unlucky. But you see how the elf was pushing the opposite direction, right? And I saw that I wanted to go up and actually revive our teammate. So I feel like I was sort of waiting for the elf to come to me here. I was trying not to move without the elf. But all in all, I think we were fine. Like, again, playing together here. I wasn't too worried. Then I turn around here to make a push towards the, the revive, because they're not that far away. Like, I know the spawn spot. They're fairly close. You can get, you can get there in almost no time. Then I look back and I'm like, wait, what? Why is the elf so far away from me? See? And the elf is over there. And I'm like, what? But still, I don't think I caught in the moment just how far away the elf was. That really confused me, because there's, if there's one thing we do not want to do right now, it's separate. So I tried to start falling back, thinking that maybe she got a little bit separated, maybe she, you know, that was... And then the elf died, and I was like, what? But why were you down there? And as it turns out, the elf explained after that, in her mind, we were fucked, and she made a run for it, right? She was like, okay, I better just run straight to the end. Which, again, I don't agree with, but I can understand that, right? That, that's a rational... Uh, from the elf perspective, that was a rational decision. And how unlucky no. was that? I, I even killed with the fight. It even died right after. And look how close the revive was, right? Not gonna lie. I was a little bit salty in the moment. Okay, I'm guilty. I was a little bit salty in the moment. I was like, why did you leave me? Why? <laughs> but it's okay. I understand. It's no, no hate, no bad feelings, right? Shit happens in Vermintide. And again, this was just a case of two people thinking two different things. And the teamwork, you know, didn't... Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. I mean, at the end... And you could also say, why wasn't I where the elf was, right? That's equally valid. Um, but the elf was thinking that we, were, we should move to the end, where I was thinking we should move to the revive. And I guess that was what split us up at the end of the day and lack of communication, right? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Become a member today if you want to support this small YouTube channel. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, anyways, as always, I love you guys. More videos coming. Stay awesome. Hell yeah. Peace out.